Good morning and welcome to day eight of the 14 day mindfulness challenge. Um, you know by now my name is Julian Jenkins and thank you for thank you for joining me today. And I know it's um you can get to these points when you do these challenges where you think, oh am I gonna bother? Is it working? Is it not working? And oh the opposite, oh this is fantastic, I can't wait for the next one. But with mindfulness, what I want you to do is understand that there will be times when you're, you know, you're really excited about doing. There'll be times you think I can't do it. There'll be times within this where, you know, you thought you were making big progress, and other days where you didn't feel as if you made as much progress. But you know what? That's what mindfulness is about. It's okay. It's about having that awareness of, you know, non-judgmental thoughts or or opinions or self self critique, and doing it all with. Um, loving kindness with an openness with a caring and I think that's that's the way it is and for me mindfulness you know my definition is the awareness of things that arises out of intentionally paying attention but doing it without judgment in an open and kind and loving way and one of the things that I want to talk about today is compassion okay and and before we do that I'd just like to know how you're getting on I know that, as I said earlier, you might have some good days and bad days and, and, and other days and, and, you know, there's times when you think you've cracked it and there's times when you realise you haven't. So be interesting to put your comments to tell me how you're getting on. How are we getting on? Um, you can tell by my voice that I'm a bit here. Um, my wife seems to be getting better, so thank you for all of that. My daughter seems to be getting better, so thank you for all of that. Um, we just hope and pray that, uh, that, you know, that we're okay and that others are okay and all of those things as well. So we're trying to do all the things right, eating lots of veg and taking our vitamins and everything else and, and just staying tight really. And, you know, I think one day we'll look back on this as a, as, as yes, you can do the 14 day mindfulness challenge, but also hopefully, um, a diary, a history diary of, of, of us and our lives. And, and in particular, my life in a house in South Wales and, and the difficult times that we've had recently. Um, and and the difficult times the country's facing but we we all come together um we're all interdependent and we'll talk about that a little bit later on but you know the fact that we're working really hard um and allowing uh, our practice of loving kindness to ourselves with compassion is clear and what i want us to think about really and just to come back onto the mindfulness side now is i want us to reaffirm that what we practice we grow so in times like this now, if we're, if we're sitting in meditation and we have an uprising consistently of fear, then fear is what we're growing. What we want to be able to do, though, is, is, is practice loving kindness, to practice compassion, to practice empathy. And, and the words that we use um, are things like acceptance, openness, curiosity. Non-striving is, is a big one. We all have... Um, you know, the desire to be better every day. Come on, let's get better. And let's not strive, let's trust. You know, do it with kindness, patience, letting go. You know, I come back to what I said, the awareness, mindfulness is the awareness that rises out of intentionally paying attention without judgment in an open, kind and loving way. So let it go, have patience, care. And the word we're using today is compassion. And how do we, how do we grow compassion? How can we um, make compassion you know something that we we really cultivate, and we know that um, that what we practice grows. And I'm not saying you know we're going to be compassionate and empathetic and happy with every experience um, that we that we that comes into our lives. But what I want us to do is to get some of those experiences, and I want us just to hold them with care, with compassion, and with empathy, and realize that we said before in the previous ones that. Neuroplasticity um, is what we can do to help cultivate and change the way our brain works through cultivating all of the words we've just said, you know, kindness, compassion, empathy, um, curiosity, acceptance, openness, all of these things. And mindfulness absolutely is proven to change the way our brain works and it significantly increases compassion and empathy in, in ourselves, but also importantly increases compassion and empathy that we have for others. What we practice becomes stronger. We need to remember our essential nature. Our essential nature is compassion, is love, is openness, is caring, is empathy. But the life and the world 
can engulf that and change those neural highways that we talked about before. When we practice this way with ourselves, moment to moment, we strengthen the compassion and the empathy within ourselves and for others. Because what we have to remember is a lot of us, and I'm, you know, I'm one and if not still one, of somebody who has a standard con conditioning pattern in, or a habit pattern of self-judgment, of striving, of self-criticism, and that something is wrong with me. Why can't I do this? You know, they can do it, why can't I? Oh, I wish I was them, I wish I was this, I wish I was that. And understand that, you know, we are who we are, and that is important. And I want us to realize that success, my definition of success, is being the best person you can be with clarity, purpose, and essential nature with values, acceptance, openness, curiosity, non-striving, trust, kindness, patience, letting go, caring, and, and, and compassion and empathy. And if you think about the ways what mindfulness can do, so we've talked about it and we've talked about the brain, we've talked about their thinking, we've talked about um, problems, we've talked about emotions, we've talked about lots of things. But mindfulness has a few things that it can do for you. It can slow down our thoughts. And we live in this very hurried, stressed world that we lose our self, you know, our natural selves. We lose touch of ourselves. And importantly, when we do that, we, we drop our levels of, of love and compassion and, and striving. And mindfulness allows us to slow down so we can clearly uh, and stay connected with our deep values. We can see our um, values and, and we can understand our true essence. And when we're hurried and scared or worried, our natural compassion doesn't come out. When we slow down and understand, our natural compassion actually rises. And I want us to understand as well that interdependence, mindfulness brings interdependence. We understand that we are all connected and we need to realize that we're all connected. And mindfulness helps us with that connection. And if you think about it, you know, somebody says, and I quite like the saying, it says that, you know, we're all cells in God's body and we clearly are, we're not separate. And if we can get compassion rising in ourselves and rising in others, then that will have a knock-on effect and compassion and empathy rises. If the coronavirus has shown us one thing, that we definitely are all connected. How can a virus that starts in Wuhan in China now be a pandemic around the world? Because at some point, everybody who has the virus has touched somebody who had the virus. That's what's, that's what's happened here. You know, we are all interdependent. We are all connected. This coronavirus absolutely shows that there is a one conscious mind, that we are intrinsically as human beings and people on this planet. We are very much connected. And when we cultivate compassion, it helps us to truly understand our essential nature. We learn to welcome all of our experiences with compassion, even the ones in our past that are seemingly unforgivable. Everyone can learn, grow and transform through cultivating loving kindness, through empathy and through compassion. And when we're holding ourselves and our experiences with this compassion and empathy, we can really make a difference to our lives. We need to be present within our hearts for ourselves and for others. Um, there's a great Jack Cornfield um, quote that is this. If you can sit quietly after difficult news, if, in a, fa if a financial downturn downturns and you remain perfectly calm, if you can see your neighbours travel to fantastic places without a twint of jealousy, if you can happily eat whatever is on your plate, if you can sleep, uh, if you can fall asleep after a day of running around without a drink or a pill, mm. if you can always find contentment just where you are, then you're probably a dog. <laughs> and I love it, it's quite funny. Um, but it's true, but we, we hold ourselves in all of those unconditional habits and compassions. The reality is, life is life. And if we can hold all of our experiences, good and bad, with compassion 
and empathy and importantly loving kindness we all stand a chance of growing transforming and learning through our experiences today we're going to do a different meditation it's going to be the mountain meditation so what i'm going to do now is is i'm going to just bring up some soft music in the background i'm going to bring a nice mountain picture up and what i'd like you to do now is just to sit with me with your eyes closed Okay, so this mountain meditation is normally done in a, in a sitting position, either on the floor or a chair. But if you want to lay down, you can. And it begins by, if we can sit down now and get into that position, and it begins by us sensing into the support you have from the chair or the cushion or the mattress where you're laying down. And paying attention to the actual sensations of contact. Finding a position of stability and poise, upper body balance over your hips and shoulders in a very comfortable, comfortable but alert position. You can put your hands on your lap or your knees and the arms can be hanging there now by their own weight. Stable and relaxed. And actually, you're sensing your body, feeling your feet, your legs, your hips, your lower and upper body, arms, shoulders, neck and head. You bring an awareness to your breath. The actual physical sensations feeling each breath as it comes in and as it goes out. Letting the breath just be, just as it is, without trying to change or regulate it in any way, allowing it to flow easily and naturally with its own rhythm and pace. Knowing that you're breathing perfectly well right now, nothing for you to do whatsoever. Allowing the body to be still and sitting with a sense of dignity or laying. A sense of resolve. A sense of being complete. Whole in this very moment. With your posture reflecting this sense of wholeness. As you sit here, letting an image form in your mind's eye. Or as we say with spirituality your third eye, in between your eyes, your eyebrows. And I want you to envisage the most magnificent or beautiful mountain you have ever seen or could imagine. And letting it gradually come into greater focus. And even if it doesn't come as a visual image, allowing the sense of this mountain and feeling its overall shape. Its lofty peak or peaks high in the sky, the large base rooted in the bedrock of the earth's crust. Its steep or gently sloping sides. Noticing how massive it is, how big it is, how solid, how unmoving, how beautiful, whether from afar or up close. Perhaps your mountain has a snow blanket in on the top and trees reaching down to the base or rugged granite sides. There may be streams and waterfalls cascading down the slopes. There may be one peak or a series of peaks or meadows with high lakes. Observing it Noting its qualities. And when you feel ready, seeing if you can bring the mountain into your own body sitting here. So that your body and your mountain and your mind's eye become one. So that you can sit here together. You can share in the sheer size and the stillness and the majestic of the mountain. You become the mountain. Grounded in the sitting posture, your head becomes the lofty peak, supported by the rest of your body and affording a beautiful panoramic view. Your shoulders and arms, the sides of the mountain, your buttocks and legs, the solid base, rooted to your cushion of your chair or your mattress. Experiencing your body a sense of 
upliftment from the deep within your pelvis and spine. With each breath as you continue sitting, becoming a little more a breathing mountain, alive and vital, yet unwavering in, in inner stillness. Completely what you are, beyond words and thought. A centred, grounded and moving presence. As you sit here, becoming aware of the fact that the sun travels across the sky. The light and the shadows and colours are changing virtually moment by moment in the mountain stillness. And the surface teems with life and activity. Streams, melting snow, waterfall, plants and wildlife. As the mountain sits seeing and feeling how night follows day and day follows night. The bright warming sun followed by the cool night sky studded with stars and the gradual dawning of a new day. Through it all the mountain just sits experiencing change in each moment. It constantly changing, yet always just being self. It remains still as the seasons flow into one another and the weather changes moment by moment and day by day. Calmness abiding all change. In the summer there is no snow on the mountain except perhaps for the very peaks or in the crag shielding from the direct sunlight. In the autumn the mountain may wear a coat of brilliant fire colours. In the winter a blanket of snow and ice. In any season it may find itself at times shrouded in clouds or fog or pelted by freezing rain. People may come to see the mountain and comment how beautiful it is. None of this really matters to the mountain. It remains at all times its essential self. Clouds may come and clouds may go. Tourists may like it or not. The mountain's magnificent magnificence and beauty are not changed one bit by whether people see it or not, seen or unseen, in sun or clouds, broiling or frigid, day or night. It just sits being itself. At times visited by violent storms, buffeted by snow and rain, and winds of unthinkable magnitude, through it all, the mountain sits. Spring comes, trees leaf out, flowers bloom in the high meadows and slopes, bird sings in the trees once again. Streams overflow with the waters of the melting snow. But through it all, the mountain continues to sit, and moved by weather, by what happens on its surface, by the world of appearances, remaining its essential true self. Through the seasons, the changing weather, the activity ebbing and flowing on its surface. In the same way as we sit in meditations, we can learn to experience the mountain. We can embody the same central unwavering stillness and groundlessness in the face of everything that changes in our lives over seconds, over hours, over years. In our lives and in our meditation practice, we can experience constantly changing nature of mind and body in the outer world. We have our own periods of light and darkness, activity and inactivity, our moments of colour and our moments of drabness. It's true that we experience storms of varying intensity and violence in the outer world and in our own minds and bodies. Buffeted by high winds, by cold and rain, we endure periods of darkness and pain as well as moments of joy and upliftment. Even our appearance consistently changes, experience of weather in and of its own. But by coming, becoming the mountain in our meditation practice, we can link up with its strength and stability and adopt this for our very own. We can use its energies to support our energy, to encounter each moment with mindfulness, with compassion, with empathy, and clarity. 
It may help us to see our thoughts and feelings, our preoccupations, our emotional storms and crises. Even the things that happen to us are very much like the weather or the mountain. We tend to take it personally, but its strongest characteristic is impersonal. The weather of our own lives is not ignored or denied. It is also to be encountered, honoured, felt, known for what it is, but held in awareness and in holding in its way, we come to a deeper silence and stillness with wisdom. We hold it and our experiences with compassion, with empathy and with loving kindness. Mountains have this to teach us more and we just need to let it in. So if you find you resonate in some way with the strength and stability of the mountain in your sitting, it may be helpful to use it from time to time in your meditation practice to remind you of what it means to sit mindfully with resolve, with wakefulness, in true stillness. So in the moments that now remain, continue to sustain the mounted meditation in your own silence, moment by moment, until you hear the sound of the bell. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it, it's, it's a great meditation because it talks to us about the mountain. The mountain is a solid structure that has so many things changing around it, but it just stays as being the mountain and that's the real strength with it. And we can be that mountain. We can have all of these things happen around us like we have at the moment, but we just need to stay strong to know that everything passes. And experiences, good or bad, we hold them with compassion, we hold them with love, we hold them with empathy and we hold them with loving kindness. And that way we can live moment by moment. We can retrain our brain to think differently. We can raise our happiness bar, if you remember. But importantly, we can be our true selves, our true essence. And we can live the life that we're meant to live with clarity and purpose. I hope that helps today. We move on to day nine tomorrow. Um, Stay safe. I am here. Please reach out if you want anything or want to say anything. Um, and don't forget, did you wake up this morning and say, Good morning, Julian. I love you. Good morning, Julian. I love you. It's a very simple thing, but it works a treat. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you for watching. Um, God bless. Be loving, give love. And we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.